Today we have the new Canvas 13 from Huion. Now this isn't the Pro model from last year. This is a brand new model for 2020. And we're going to go over that in just a minute. I getting out of bed today. Keep waking up from the previous night. Canvas 13 is a pen display, meaning you need a host computer to operate it. That can be a laptop, PC, or Android tablet. New for this model comes in purple, green, and black. I chose the black because I'm a bit of a creature of habit. I'm John, and I do reviews and tutorials on hardware and software that help with the creative process. Now join me and remember where you were supposed to be by hitting that subscribe button, clicking that bell, so you won't miss anything. And if you watch to the end of this video, I will find the dumbest friend I have to go save some old lady's cat out of a tree. It's the least I can do. Here are the contents of your kit unbox. You obviously have your pen and pen holder. Mine came with two smudge guard gloves, appreciate that. Stand was included. Needed cables, except for one, we're gonna talk about that in a minute. Uh, microfiber cloth, etc., etc. So pretty much everything you need to get started, although I found the instructions on the website uh, a little bit more detailed than the printed ones that came inside the box. The stand is something we've talked about before last year on the Pro model. Now, it features these little legs that you kind of kick out. There's two of them, which give you about seven positions of adjustment. This tablet is super thin and super light, very easy to carry around. And something new is it actually features two USB-C ports. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. The back of the tablet is plastic. It's like a matte gray and features four rubber feet to keep it from sliding around. We'll tear this plastic off and we're ready to go. On to pay the bills. This pen display is 13.3 inches. It is electromagnetic resonance EMR for short. Resolution is 1920 by 1080. Features an IPS panel and 16.7 million displayable colors. Contrast ratio is 1000 to 1. Color gamut is 120% sRGB. It features 8 express keys and a 266 report rate that should help with lag on those fast strokes. It's got a replaceable anti-glare mat which does the trick, plus additionally, there's a texture on it that we'll talk about later. Underneath is a fully laminated display which is supposed to reduce parallax. We'll put that to the test in a second. Now this comes with the new PW517 battery-free pen. 8192 pressure levels, it supports tilt at about 60 degrees. Now we gotta talk about this new Pentec 3.0 technology. What they've done is they've reduced the uh, size of the nib towards the end and they've done a whole bit of other sorcery. What does that mean to you and I? It means they made the pen better. Right, so here it is. If you didn't tell me, I would think it was the exact same pen that's come with you, Jan, for the last year or two. At the end, no eraser, a rubberized grip, two programmable buttons, a round barrel that tapers towards the edge. Now this new nib has even less give in it than previous nibs, so it's not gonna really move around on you when you put the pen tip to glass. It's light in your hand, not very heavy, We've talked about the sort of weight and pen style before, which I've come to enjoy. Crack the pen holder open, you got 10 nibs in there plus the nib remover. The only real difference here is that as opposed to the nibs facing up, they put them nice so when you open the thing up, they don't come, you know, flying at you and poking you in the eye. There's different connection options. We're first going to talk about the 3 in 1 cable. On one side, you have your HDMI, you have your black for data, you have your red for power. On this particular model, you can use both USB-A cables, plug them in for power. In other words, you don't need a brick. To the right, that's your all-in-one USB-C connector. You can plug the red USB-A cable into any iPhone or, you know, Samsung charger that'll take a USB-A connection. So let's check out these couple different options. One, that 3-in-1 cable is going to go into the top port on your pen display. The bottom USB-C port is something we need to talk about. For the first time, at least that I know about, Huion now features a one-to-one -one connection with one USB-C cable. To do that, you're going to need this uh, Huion branded USB-C to USB cable. When I mention using the Huion branded USB-C cable for this, there's a very good reason for that. And the reason is, any of my other USB-C to USB-C cables uh, didn't seem to fit because the the casing is too thick and, and the port is too deep or something or another. The iPad Pro cable seems to fit, but it must not meet the spec for both power and data. So these people who created USB 3 and USB 3.1, they, they really made a mess of this thing. Thunderbolt 3, USB 4, it's all a big disaster. So I went on Amazon just to hunt around and see what kind of cables would work with this thing aside from the Huion one. And this one, ironically enough, is the same one Brad Cobalt found and he had to shave his down to get it to fit. Now he got it to work, 
But, you know, when you're looking at $31.99 or something like that for a cable, you don't really want to be shaving it down. You're looking for a couple things here. You're looking for 40 gigabytes. You're looking for the spec has to be USB 3.1 Gen 1 and up. That include, could be Thunderbolt 3, doesn't have to be, but it could be. Your safest bet, obviously, is going to go with the Huion one, but I know people are going to ask in the comments for alternatives. Now, you know how we do it at Create Now, Sleep Later, and uh, we've invited Mr. Huion on to answer some of your burning questions. So, Mr. Huion, to... Uh, Huion. What? Huion. Yeah, that's what I said. Mm, not really. Huion. Uh, Huion. Hu Huion. Right, so anyway, about this cable business. Mm. Uh, some people on the interwebs are sort of saying, you know, the price of the cable may be a little high and, uh, mm. you know, I'm kind of leaning in, you know, 50-50 either way, but, you know, would really like to see the cable inside the box. What say you on this matter? Well, we included the 3-in-1 cable for a fully functional rich user experience. Mm -hmm. Well, that's true. It does work with the 3-in-1 cable. Mm -hmm. Plus, we'd have to raise the price if we included the USB-C cable. Raise the price? Mm -hmm. No, no, wait, no, wait, no, no. Cut. Well, let's talk about this cable situation. I really don't like proprietary cables, but this isn't a proprietary cable. It's an industry standard, so it's like, it's not really a deal breaker for me, but as a general rule, it's kind of frowned upon. So my constructive criticism would be, if we're gonna go with an industry standard cable type, like USB-C, you should probably be able to use um, any USB-C cable, as long as it's within spec. That said, I do understand leaving the cable out of the box because that's gonna raise the price and everybody's gonna freak out over that. Now this guy has got eight programmable buttons and what I like what they did is the middle buttons you can press them together uh, to get to the OSD menu as opposed to having a dedicated button to it. Speaking of shortcut keys and the driver this is where you can configure them. We've covered the Huion driver in great detail before so we're going to run through it real quick. This is where you'll map your shortcuts to the two programmable buttons on your pen eraser for example. Adjust the pressure curve and enable Windows Ink. The work area is going to set which screen you're working on. Especially if you got two displays, you're going to have to go in here and toggle once in a while. As well as set the rotation if you happen to be left-handed. Last on this screen is the monitor calibration. You'll go in there to set the calibration for your pen. Key thing in the About tab is this is where you import and export configuration settings. If you click this little gear up at the top, this is where you can configure all your different profiles depending on how many applications you have loaded. Just make sure you do an export once you have the keys up set the way you want or if you do any changes. Now speaking of things I really like, I often use this uh, certain ink brush, and I mentioned the guy by name, Jonathan Rector. Uh, he's a buddy of mine, and I thought I'd plug him here, you know, because I use his stuff and pimp his brush all the time. You can get that brush along with other goodies by subbing him on Patreon. I'm going to put the links below. He's got a great YouTube channel. He does live streaming and everything like that. The guy's fantastic. And again, you could get those brushes at the entry level, just a buck, you know, for three bucks he shares his PSD files and his Clip Studio files. and. He even does commissions, so check him out. I'll post his socials in the description below. On to the Android functionality. Now, to do the Android, you're going to have to obviously use an external power source. And again, you're going to use that bottom USB-C port straight to your Android device of choice. Now, that's kind of where the kicker is. I had to grab a device from a friend. That was a Samsung Note 9, I believe. And unfortunately... Because of this virus and stuff, I didn't get to capture it, but I did get to test it. So I've included a little video here from Huion showing what it's supposed to do. And basically acts as a pen display to your Android tablet like it does with your, you know, Windows or, or, or Mac PC or laptop. Which, in theory, sounds fantastic. My thoughts on this are, it's a really cool feature. Except the technology isn't really there yet. Meaning, you know, with Samsung, you got to fire out this, this deck stuff and... Yeah, that's probably why it's messing with everything. It's not working right. But what did I experience? Well, I used uh, Huion Sketch, which is free. Uh, we covered that before, I think, in the Inspiroy Dial Review. That's their free drawing app on Android. Uh, Sketchbook Pro, no pressure. Infinity Painter, which I think is their... That's like the top Android app, art app. And uh, that did have pressure, but um, I couldn't, couldn't zoom in. Like, I couldn't... You know, there's no touch on the device, so Zoom didn't work or whatever. I'd, I'd like to see in the comments below uh, how many people are really watching this video and, and interested in buying this device. 
because this is Android functionality, because uh, that kind of feedback will help these manufacturers either, you know, commit to it or just say, ah, you know, it's a cool thing, but really not worth it. So we're back with Mr. Huyan and, um, you know, speaking about the, 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 the future direction of, uh, you know, these uh, pen displays is uh, some might say that, you know, we've reached sort of a, you know, a plateau, so to speak. Um, Interesting. Which I somewhat agree. Mm. And that, you know, uh, things like touch and, and, and different things, you know, and, and higher resolutions and PPI and stuff that I, they speak about, you know, uh, what's your opinion on maybe adding something like, uh, you know, touch screen to these uh, pen displays? Well, we gave you two smudge guard gloves so you can do your glove dance. No, no man, that, no, that, that's Brad's thing. I, I, no, that's I not do you, the, do the, the gloves. Man, I can't. No, you dance. do the dance. Shoot, I, I just, I want to just, I just want the touch. Well, I mean, we can look at touch, but we'd have to raise the price no. of the device, like eight hundred dollars. No, what do you mean? I don't want to pay that. No, I don't want to pay that high of a price. I want it for, I want it for the same price it is now with everything. I, it's not free, is it? I mean, I, I want to be seven feet tall and play center for the Knicks, but I do see your that is that is a good point. Can't have everything. We upgraded the pen tech, superior pen pressure, line quality. Let's continue to discuss this offline. Gave you the stand. So we put all this new tech to test, right? And as you can see, even with my camera on a very diagonal level, there is virtually no parallax. The EMR lag is slight but expected, but the pen tip is almost right on top of the cursor. And again, that's only because the camera is tilted to the side. So let's hit these line tests in Sketchbook Pro. We're just kind of messing around here and uh, we're doing the light and medium hard tests as per usual. And the first thing I'm noticing is a very big difference in the pen uh, quality at the low end from last year. So we're gonna keep knocking about here and validating what I think I'm seeing. Now you see these lines, if, if you look at even the reviews I did a year ago on the pro models, you weren't quite seeing the initial activation point at the light end be so accurate. Even switching to the ink now, you could see the the gradient we're always looking for in a black line at the very low end, all the way consistent to the end of the, the end of the stroke. And again, with our circle test, we're testing, you know, end to end of that pen stroke, and uh, these these lines are, are are really good. Not seeing a lot of lag here. I mean, we we talk about you know the standard EMR lag, you know that's a thing no matter what, but. Uh, the pen is keeping up okay. No degradation in the pen strokes as I move quicker. I mean, I don't know. I just, I just always wanted a puppy. You know, it's just something I love. John, do you like the pen display? What? Yeah, I'll do the dishes. Oh. Hey, do me a favor. Can you pick up some toilet paper next time you go to the store? I went downstairs, there wasn't any. You see what I mean? Is it that much to ask? Is toilet paper? Like, what of it? Like, what is toilet paper? Some kind of rare commodity now? Really? Now we're going to hit our line test real quick. Stabilization is off. You know, whereas in last year's 13-inch uh, Pro, you know, there was some conversation going back and forth where they did address it in the firmware, some wobble, but check this out here. I'm so impressed by the quality of the line that I actually go double check and make sure that I had the stabilization off. So when I filmed this, I actually thought I screwed up and left the stabilization line. So we verify it one more time and, and look how straight that line is. A slow diagonal line test doesn't get any better than that, folks. I have the uh, friend and tilt the sketch brush and right now on its tip, you could see nothing wrong. Tilt seems to be working okay. And now we tilt it at 60 degrees and you could see 
you get in the shading no problem but additionally uh, where there was a problem with the cursor jumping back and forth with the pen nib we're going to put that to bed right now as you can see the cursor is not jumping around it tracks accurately so whatever their issues uh, that might have been in the past are uh, completely mitigated you can see this is the same pencil we go from a square box we tilt it and we're adding some shading here so good to go now as we mess around in clip studio uh, paint here i wanted to mention a couple of things one the um the laminated texture on this display by far has the most pencil-like feel um, I've probably ever experienced on a pen tablet. It's more than any of the Huion devices you've experienced before. I'm the kind of person who really likes that texture feedback. So if you also like that, I think you're really going to enjoy the tablet. The second thing is you can um, operate this in uh, pen tablet mode aka Cintiq mode, uh, meaning that you can turn the uh, display off and you can use it just as a like a regular pen tablet. Language on hers, are you reason to talk to somebody that way? Oh, right in the pen pressure. Yeah, I found it. And of course, uh, right about here, when we're switching to inking, I'm switching to my man's brush here, as I mentioned earlier. So not just a plug for him, but it's actually one of my favorite brushes to use. And to complement basically what we have uh, covered already in this video, the line quality does not disappoint. The pressure curve is superb. We showed earlier, you know, with those black lines, light to dark circles, different kinds of things you're seeing now in this drawing. I am having absolutely no issue. It is just about perfect control. So when you sum all this thing up, right, we talked about an awful lot. In this video because this tablet is uh you know there's a lot of changes and it's capable of a lot and you have the you know the one cable solution you know if you want it but um the bottom line is you are not going to buy the tablet for most of those things you're going to buy this tablet because of the extraordinary uh pen quality and uh of this new pen uh, you know on the other side of it i understand there's there's features people, you know, still want. We're starting to get to an area now where, well, what happens when the pen quality is so good that now we start to sort of crave for these other features, right? Like touch and, you know, things like that. And, and then the thing jumps up $400 or something like that. Everybody's going to freak out. So we need to sort of, you know, balance and weigh that and give that feedback, you know, back to companies like Huion to say, hey, this is what we're looking for you know, future, but at least for 2020 now, you guys should have no qualms or no issues if you're in the market for a 13 inch display right now uh, to go pick this thing up. Uh, you know, just really well done, fantastic job. So hopefully you guys are uh, staying safe out there, man, it's really crazy times. You know, thanks for uh, sticking with me to the end of this video and uh, you know, keep drawing, you know, keep having fun, keeping your mind all this stuff, man, you know, creative people were the answer, right, you know? tough times people turn to us so uh drop some comments below let's get in a conversation about it and i'll check you guys out in the next one thanks for watching